Bro, how are you? How's it going, man? We are officially oh. recording, so watch your uh, watch yourself. Don't don't make any sudden movements. Uh, <laughs> I was I was just looking for HD webcams, uh, and they were like, "There's no brand name webcam in stock," and like, the, the, really? there are, but they're selling for like the Logitech, like basically the stand like the standard and HD webcams is like two hundred and nineteen dollars, which Jesus. is because it's being sold by like other sellers. Yeah. Oh, I love Blue Bottle. That place is awesome. Yeah, Blue Bottle's solid. Blue Bottle's solid. And I really like what they did during the pandemic. They uh, they paid all their employees. Uh, oh, well, even if the shop wasn't At least that's what open. they said on the little sign. Yeah. Who knows what the reality was. But uh-huh. um, they're like, yep, everyone's at home. They're being paid, um, yeah. yada, yada. So who knows what yeah. layoffs and the kind of things that they had. But I can appreciate that. I can respect that. Good for them. Yeah, Blue Sparrow and Rhino did the same thing here. Um, I don't know if you ever hit little tiny hole in the wall spot, but they did the same thing. Yeah. Drugs is a good business, man. It's a yeah. solid business. It's people need their drugs and <laughs> premium for it. And I like my fancy drugs. Um, That's right. <laughs> Blue Bottle is great though. It's like walking in, you just feel like you're in the future and fancy and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good shit. <sighs> My favorite one, uh, the ones in Japan are cool, but my favorite one that I've been to was, um, it's in SF and it's this really, it's in this really old building on the first floor. It's like part of the lobby. Uh-huh. Uh, and I can't remember what the cross streets were, but it's fucking dope. Um, really enjoyed that one. A blue bottle specifically? Yeah, yeah, it's a blue yeah. bottle. Uh-huh. Um, I, I can't remember exactly what the cross streets were, but it's gorgeous. There's a, there's a bunch of cool ones. Um, what they try and do, at least my understanding, they try and find uh, really cool empty spots yeah. uh, that have like, they'll find like an old, like like an old speakeasy or whatever, and like try and convert that into a blue bottle while trying to maintain kind of the unique aspects of the building and the architecture. There's a cool one in Oakland um in more of the suburbs of oakland that was like yes yeah, some old industrial building of some kind that they just you know now they serve bougie coffee in um which is you know take it like depending on your stance on oakland and how it should be is either a positive <laughs> or a negative yeah. for you yeah but it's all uh not enoughness stuff it's like the uh the only thing the builders can make with all the regulations here in California, uh, like that'll turn a profit are luxury buildings. And so there's just so many rules and laws and all sorts of other bullshit that the only thing they can make is like luxury condos. And they're like, well, all that's going up is unaffordable housing. And I'm like, (laughs) it's like, basically it's affordable, affordable for people who like used to live in SF and are getting priced out of San Francisco, which is like, yeah, that's a very high bar kind of thing. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to it. I don't really care to just build more things. I, I, just, I just don't know what to tell you. Like how, Colorado doesn't have this problem. They just build more shit and shit just gets uh, more, Boulder, and more expensive. But yeah, in Boulder, I, I meant to say Denver, not Boulder. Yeah. I mean, not Colorado as a whole, but yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Politics are dumb. It's all <laughs> the wrong incentives. Uh, it, it's all just it's all just stupid. Um, kind of distract. Did you get a chance to give that a listen to that I podcast did. I, I sent you? Um, um, anything was... sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> That's I. Uh, yeah, it was like five or ten minutes in, um, and just every like. It wasn't even just conceptually the same. It was like word for word. A it's lot nuts. of the thing. Yeah. Either like either you directly or Brenton stuff, like word for word. It's um, crazy. It's yeah, nuts. It was insane. Um, yeah, we've never met. I've never known that. I didn't know that guy existed. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and this like apparently like, you know, he sounds like an older guy, right? He's a neurosurgeon and, and has been one for quite some time. So he's got to be in his 40s or 50s at this point. And so he was uh he met that lady in the 60s so he's yeah. probably in his mid 
Jeez. So that's fucking nuts, right? That's me doing that and learning that. And this, like I said, there's nothing new under the sun. She learned it from someone else, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure she didn't like just happen upon this information. Um, and that's what this is all about. It's finding some, uh, like it's folks that want what, what you have and giving it to them as it was freely given to you, right? It's, uh, and it's like, the, it's a prescription for life that just works, man. It just works. And by work, I mean turning uh, and changing my perception of the world around me. And then the way that I, and then the world just interacts differently with me when I perceive it differently. And it's like, I don't even need to believe in any like woo woo stuff for that to intuitively make sense. Because I think we all have examples of going through like just having a bad day where like nothing goes right and it just begets more and more shit, <laughs> right? And then also the inverse, right? Of just kind of everything is just kind of flowing um, and going out there like, oh, the sun is bright and like birds are chirping and like, oh, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, you get done with the way you work out in the morning and like going out in the rest of your day and it, feels and oh look and lo and behold the rest of the day just kind of unfolds really nicely um and it's not an accident like these like there's a method to this stuff and like life doesn't have to be that hard it really doesn't it doesn't have to hurt so much um And maybe it does for some people. I don't know. Because it did for me. Like, <laughs> and it was a really big motivator to get me kind of kind of going. And if life is just okay, I guess, you know, that's that's almost worse, I think. That's almost a, like a worse curse for life, like just life to just be like, eh, where it's there's not really enough uh, kind of motivation to go seek a different solution to life. Um, and just kind of like just cruising, I guess, just chilling, uh, like just like, eh, just a little bit like bored and complacent. It's almost worse. Um, yeah, I think it is. Um, I, it's really not that different than like what my experience of being medicated was. Like that's uh, what I yeah. said mm -hmm. is they yep. just, you're just here, you're great. It's fine. You're not like, you're not on fire. At least I wasn't, but I was definitely not like stoked. Um, well, yeah, the thing with, you know, the thing with medications, at least my experience with them and uh, yeah, this is not medical advice, but this is just my personal experience on medication is that they both through my narcolepsy and through depression was like, so I'm just supposed to take this forever. Yeah. We're just treating the symptoms or like chemical imbalances. Um, and it's like this band aid. Uh, and so, and what I know about depression in my own experience is like, it just gets without it treating it directly, it just gets worse it just gets more and more intense. And then you have to up the dose. And then it's like this, uh, it's this like uh, arms race between <laughs> like my spirit and <laughs> the chemicals <laughs> uh, because I'm not dealing with the root causes of the depression, which in my experience are the stories, I, the, the self-talk. It's the self-talk. It's funny, I was listening to another thing where there was this doctor who was uh, happy to prescribe stuff. And this isn't, uh, um, uh, this isn't deriding prescription medication. I think they absolutely have their place and they can be a boon for lots and lots of people. Um, but for a bunch of folks, it's insufficient. It's like a necessary but insufficient condition for solving their problem. And I uh, was listening to this other, this other podcast and uh, there was a doctor who uh, treated people for depression and then he did it like an experiment where he would prescribe medication and then he would say, as well as um, all of these depressed people, he's like, you know what we're going to do? We're all going to get together twice a week and we're going to start gardening and like cleaning up this like really nasty part of town. And lo and behold, a bunch of anxious people all getting together over time 
uh, like started to like feel better because they were being in community with each other and they were less lonely because they were around other people doing something and having a purpose. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. So, uh, all right, man, why don't you tell me about your week so far? Um, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, so I, as far as what the routine looks like, I go through and I journal in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. And from there, I shower, usually. Uh, usually. I, today, I didn't. That's uh, hence the uh, Mariner's hat. <laughs> so I get three demerits for not entering and cleaning my body this morning. <laughs> and then I meditate. Uh, yeah. And still just doing the like the free timer on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, with with just a time, just your own timer. Uh, it's the waking up one, so it does like the little gong. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing you get if you don't pay for it now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, which is fine. I actually really like that format and then uh they have a new feature it, that's called moments which is actually okay. it just came out yesterday or two days ago or whatever and uh what it does is it just provides a link to this mm -hmm. ephemeral like 30 second in app or like 30 seconds to like three minutes just yeah talk about something related to mindfulness or meditation or what have you. And just to, to the way that he describes it is uh, so funny how these all like, it's all the same stuff uh, is very much like how we were talking about last week. I think it was, or maybe it was that with one of my other guys, but we've definitely talked about it where like meditation is practice for the big game which is life, right? It's like, that's doing, it's practicing free throws, right? Yeah. So I just, it's just practicing free throws so that when I'm on the line and there's like five seconds left and I'm down by one point and like the opponent team, like the opponent's crowd is like cheering and booing and yelling and blah, blah. I can just go ahead and I can just, I can just do it. Now I can't simulate that directly right? I can't simulate the prime time directly, right? Because life's going to come up with all sorts of unexpected, weird scenarios and things. But I can just sit and practice my free throws. And that's what meditation does. And that's what it is. It's just training for the mind in that way. And what moments temp attempts to do is like bring meditation throughout the rest of your day. So, so frequently, it's like, all right, well, the meditation's done. I got that out of the way. Now it's back to the, like, the real world, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay. It's like, I'm never done. Like the meditation is, is the day is the meditation. Yeah. And uh, that's what moments attempts to do, which I thought was a cool idea. Yeah, I actually really enjoy that. Um, but I anyway, think... I, I, I interrupted you. Uh, continue with your... It's, it's weird. That's never happened before. I was like actually pretty off, put off by being interrupted. Yeah. <laughs> um, we yeah, wouldn't so have I, a talk if I didn't interrupt you. Like there would be <laughs> nothing for me to do if I just let you talk. And it would like we wouldn't be able to do this at all. We might as well just not record. Yeah. Might as well just yeah. stop working together. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh fuck, where was it? Uh, yeah, so I, I meditate and then. Patty is back to almost walking normally. She's like toe tapping a little bit. So we go for a short walk in the morning so she can start using so that leg a little more. So adorable. And, oh yeah. She's trying to, she like, um, she walks with her two front legs and then she kind of pogo sticks with both of her back legs together because she doesn't want to put all of her weight on that back one yet. That's so um, cute. Oh, no, it's adorable. So we do that and I uh, get back. I have some breakfast and... Uh, then just start my day as far as like work and stuff like that goes, uh, work for a while and, uh, usually afternoon ish, uh, either I'll go work out or I'll go to jujitsu. Um, or sometimes I don't, I just like hang out and that feels pretty good too. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and uh, get back from doing that thing, work some more. And then uh, after work, it's usually like homework, Japanese, like, well, Japanese is all day at this point. It's like, if I'm listening to something, it's Japanese in the background. Um, and so I'll do that, do some homework, uh, cook some dinner, and then uh, kind of freeform that evening time, right? It's like, what well, sounds fun? Um, sometimes it's video games, sometimes it's just watching some Netflix, um, work with my guys. So I've got one on Monday and one on Wednesday. Um, Say Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. It's um, a good split. Yeah. It, uh, normally, I have my Japanese tutor on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, I'm out of lessons right now. Um, so that was kind of the, it gives me kind of like one thing to connect with another person after work uh, each day of the, uh, the week, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I've been playing, uh, have you seen Hades on uh, Steam? Dude, uh, I told you about Hades. Did you really? Was yes. that you? Okay. <laughs> uh, that Absolutely. Fucking game. Game's fucking awesome. Have you beaten it yet? No, not yet. I just yeah. got it a couple days ago. But okay. oh my god. That it's like it's the first game I've played in a while that's like what time is it? Oh yeah, I can do one more. Ex I, I it. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's and, it's and pretty it's good like, at that. Yeah. It's pretty good at that. How many, like, how, do you have the, all the weapons yet? Or? No, not yet. I think I've got two left. Um, okay. Okay. And it's a funny story about Hades is yeah. I was like, I don't know why I can't direct where my hero is aiming. I, that took me a while to figure out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I was like, like, why are you just swinging? Why are at you the shooting in this ass? other direction? You <laughs> asshole. And then other times you aren't. Well, it's because yep. I was clicking in that direction. I'm like, oh yep. my god, I had no idea how to direct the. the I felt like such a fucking boomer. Um, <laughs> oh my god, this is how it starts. <laughs> but yeah, Hades is fantastic at that, um, and it's so I, I. Given how the game works, where it's like the you just do the same thing over and over again. Um, it's amazing how you all you're you're not doing the same thing over and over again, and it keeps me interested. And the dialogue is unique every time. It's like I have not heard a repeat voice line from anyone. It's insane. Crazy. It's so nuts. Uh, the game is fantastic. It's so good. It's yeah. so good. I I I beat the game, yeah. um, and uh, like obviously you're not done when you beat yeah. the game, like, <laughs> like shocker. Um, yeah. And so I haven't played it since I've, I, I, I beat it. Um, I won't tell you any more. I want you to like, uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's totally worth it. Let me put it that okay. way. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very satisfying. It's really bizarre how it's both satisfying to win and also gets me want, gets, gets me wanting to come back to play more. Um, uh, and then, yeah, once you beat it, they just give you options to make the game harder in some way. And yeah. then you gain like certain, okay, you already know. All right. Um, yeah, I, I'm used to that format. Okay. Like, okay. Uh, yeah. So it's a great metaphor for what we do. It's yeah. like, once you kind of see it and you kind of get it, and then it's like, we're not done. It's just like, how do I do it in more <laughs> difficult ways? Um, and in other like bigger, chip, more like challenging spaces. Um, and, and you're never done never done no, no it's uh never over yeah it, it's it's great it's a great game it's fantastic I, uh this week in particular that kind of like uh that never done has come up a lot and i think just my and this isn't you know uh, anything new per se but i don't know that we've really explicitly talked about it um it's just how much my like desires for things have shifted especially recently um and well yeah that's going to happen whether or not we do this work oh totally. right so that's that's kind of just the nature of desire but what do you think the big like differences between um between that like so whether or not we're working a spiritual path or working on our minds or um and uh like our what we what we desire is going to change and shift right but 
like I think what you were getting at, I want you to like, so where do you think the difference is between the stuff that we're doing and how I desire shifts and then just normal sh shifting? Yeah, um, I think normal shifting is not that different than like the dog in up, right? Or like any dog in real life. It's like, oh, squirrel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> here's this thing. I'm going to go get it. It's shiny. Yeah. It's new. Fuck yeah. Um, and I think when you do what, the work that we do, um, stuff still feels shiny, uh, but it's a very, uh, the, the analogy that comes to mind is it's like fool's gold versus the real thing. Um, and like the things that I'm actually wanting, I pursue much more freely. And also just the, the things that I'm wanting are much less based in, oh, if I, if I get this thing, then person X is going to love me or I'm, then I'll be happy. And then I'll like sit on my throne of contentedness or whatever else. Like I'll drive around in the Bugatti having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I think you nailed it with the phrase what I'm really wanting. Yeah. Right. So it's like I'm getting clearer on what I like capital W want yeah. uh, rather than so what someone else wants for me or what I think I want, what I think will bring me like contentedness and peace or love or whatever it is I'm, I'm seeking. Uh, once I realize like I already am those things and have those things and I can be happy now, right now, that's, I can be happy right now. And that's a choice. Uh, then I get like, oh, okay, well, now that I have like all of that stuff, what do I actually want? Now that I don't have to go get all that shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's so cool about you like strap the fuck in man because like you helping other guys with this stuff it's like you're I, like my goal is i want your life to be even more crazy and bigger than mine and like i want you not, not that it's a contest um no it is it's, it's like fine. i want <laughs> <laughs> like i want like the more i give away the more i get back it's crazy yeah yeah and that's kind of oh, the selfish you know, reason behind all of this kind of that's why i always am like I, it's kind of weird when i hear other people that don't want to like mentor and i'm like okay like whatever you say like that's kind of nuts to me um because yeah. they they view it as like oh i am like just giving I like oh there's this t this finite amount of time that I have which is accurate um I only have so much time in the day uh but as it's like as opposed to doing what yeah where it's absolutely. like it's like I am planting these seeds that I'm gonna sow 5 10 15 20 30 years down the line of just shit coming back to me <laughs> the more people I help another it, reason just, why I don't charge for it yeah because when it's free, like I can't divide by zero, right? So it's, it's like I when it's free, it's like that's like infinity returns to me. Yeah, I right? agree. <laughs> One of uh, with my first guy that I got this uh, this last week, he just gra I like graduated, but uh, he was texting me every morning with his appreciations and then uh, whether or not he made his bed. Um, yeah. and he he graduated from that this week i'm like you can you can text me if you want to but you're done with that phase you're never done but like you're done with the mandated check-in part um and even through like you know degrees of separation through the screen um to see his like his reaction to like oh fuck we're like doing it and i did a thing and now i'm done with that part of the thing. um was super cool. It was really, really cool. Yeah, the, the whole checking in in the beginning is just uh, like that extra layer of accountability just helps. And we're just building momentum and taking care of ourselves. Yeah. And so whether it's making the bed, it's like making the bed is more like symbolic than anything. Do I really think like you're like a failure if you don't make your bed every day? No, of course not. But it's like, it's kind of like, why wouldn't I do it? It takes two seconds and it's like, I have a nice bed uh, to get into at the end of the day. It's like, it's, it's, it's just weird not to. It's just, and it's very nice and symbolic, which we've talked about a bunch of times. Starting the day with like, 
a success ending the day getting into the success like of the day it's like it's a no-brainer for me yeah but it's just again just keeping and building momentum slowly but surely um and then once i'm like okay they've waxed on and waxed off enough they've gotten kind of like the appreciation let's like default into their brain and to like default into the appreciation side then we can go ahead and and that's like there's no set day for it it's not like i mark it on a calendar like no, all right i do that for three months and then we're done like no I, so yeah and then the biggest graduation is the is the them doing it with somebody else that's like when they've really that's it's just a self perpetuation let's say it's just a self perpetuating like infinity motion machine or whatever it's called <laughs> perpetual motion device like that's what this whole thing is um that's what it's for and then the ripples of that just go out to who knows how many other people it's it's great in it we've talked about this idea several times um but if i'm not walking the walk and then I'm showing up twice a week or however many times a week to to try and like give this to somebody else it just doesn't it doesn't work um and it doesn't they they can pick up on that right and so uh it kind of is a guardrails is the wrong word I don't know how I quite want to describe it but it's like a it's a reminder that uh, I'm not alone in this thing. And I like have a, uh, an opportunity to give something freely to somebody else that I can only give away if I'm keeping for myself in the first place. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just a, it's, a, we talked, we just talked about accountability and being a mentor is such a great way of keeping myself accountable as my guys are going to like, let me know mostly indirectly they're not going to be like uh bro you're like losing it like but they'll <laughs> it'll be clear on the calls yeah that i'm not bringing the same fucking juice god bring it like and the only way i can bring it authentic like is is it like like you said is to be walking a walk i have like the authenticity is there and that includes like if you're not it's uh, like there are going to be days when I don't feel like I'm crushing it. Yeah. It's life. It's fine. Yeah. I'm not going to be at the top of like the roller coaster every fucking day. Right. But there's nothing like a call to get me back on and focused. It's like it, the check-ins at this point with so many of my guys is just like, they've been doing it for so long. It's like, yeah, your life is amazing. Let's just recognize it and let's pause. Let's take 30 minutes out of the day and just recognize like, holy shit, look at how far I've come. And like, what else do I want? Getting Cause it's really easy to just be like, I had all the fucking shit, man. This is great. And just chill it. And that's fine too. And then it's kind of boring. And it's like, what else do I want? It's funny, like with Kellen, and it's like, he was like, man, I really just want like more space. We talked about that like twice. And then three, as I always just ask him what he wants, like, what do you want, man? Uh, and which I'm, you're not, you're, you're more than familiar with. And then like fucking three months later, he's closing on a new house. It's crazy. Yeah. With, with like tons more room. And I'm like, of course, that's how it worked. Uh, every time. Every time. So just throwing it out there, communicating it, talking about it, it's, it's invaluable. Uh, it's like, I, I hope everyone who wants it can have it. Uh, I hope they get it. Yeah, I think something I'm really appreciating um, is like early on in us doing this together, or earlier on, a big point for me, and I think, uh, well, I'll just leave it at that. A big point for me was feeling like I didn't have the community I wanted to be in, or like I, I wasn't uh, engaged with the types of people I was hoping to see. And um, that is one of the, the most radical shifts for me, for sure. Um, and I was hanging out with a, a friend of mine yesterday um, who I used to work at Gaia with. And uh, it was we were just talking, kind of shooting the shit. And uh, I don't remember exactly the context, but she was like, yeah, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be in Japan in, soon anyway. Uh, 
And it was, it's just really cool to have so many people in my life that are like, of course, that's going to happen for you. It's mm -hmm. not like, oh, that's a nice pipe dream, but like, don't do that. For yeah, it's a nice little barometer for whether or not someone should be in my life. Like, are they happy for, like, if I share a success with them, are they like happy for me? Like, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm making 30,000 more dollars a year now. And are they like, like, are they visibly like feel weird about it? Or are they like, are they ecstatic or are they like, obviously? Uh, that's kind of the three reactions. <laughs> I don't really have anyone left that uh, that I like choose to regularly associate with that isn't the latter of those three, right? It's like yeah. they're either yep. Like, and, and the tricky one is family. It's like I could tell my dad I get a promotion. Yeah, super st super stoked. I could tell my mom I make some more money, and she's like, she's weird about it. Okay, it's really it's funny. It's funny. I think. Yeah, the, the family one is kind of interesting. I I feel like I've just gotten to a place with both of them now uh, where it's not really weird anymore. Like, and I'm that that might ebb and change and flow, and you know, it, it almost certainly will, but um, the support just feels kind of endless from them at this point, which I feel really, really remarkably fortunate to have. Yeah, dude, you, your relationship with your parents don't have to be my relationship with my parents, right? <laughs> it's like they're totally different people. Family is a fun one. I like that one because I find it to be the most, um, let me put it this way. It's like with friends or with other people, it's very e clear and easy for, it's like, you, we just won't be in my life anymore. Like we just won't talk, but they don't need to always be your friend, which is fine. And, but my mom is always my mom and my dad is always my dad, no matter what. And uh, the story there is like, it's a lot easier to just not be with friends than fam. Family is always a part of me forever, no matter what. Now, what is, uh, what is fine is like, I kind of have control over how much of a part of my life they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how do I know? It's like, how does it feel? Yeah. Um, for me, this has just changed pretty recently. Um, with, I, I was definitely like, dude, this is so good. Obviously they are like, obviously there's no sponsor for this podcast that has like two people <laughs> listening to it, but like, this is so fucking good. It's so delicious. Ugh. I, coffee is just, is wonderful. Is the, really oh, is. so you're back to drinking coffee. Yeah. I made it like two months. Yeah. That's uh, okay. That's what I thought. All right. Yeah. I, uh, uh coffee is amazing. Look, it's great. Uh, and I, look, if we can't, if we want to find out, like I'm all for finding out what like feels good, I, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> like I just discovered literally like this week, I can't do eggs. Really? Eggs. I feel like absolutely. I like here, here, I just did a little experiment and I was like, all right, what, I, what if I just have bacon for breakfast? What does that feel like? No, because I had a sneaking suspicion eggs were fucking me up. I just had a suspicion. Yeah. And I was like, what if I just eat bacon instead? And I had the bacon. I felt like a million bucks. I had <laughs> bacon with just and like, and I was like, oh, my tummy kind of hurts. I kind of feel like tired. It's like, uh, like really like, uh, like more tired than when I woke up. Like, this is so weird. Boom. And I did that like three or four times. Like, dude, it's no more. Eggs, no mas. Now it's easy. I made that connection. Boom. I did the same thing with milk. It's like I'm drinking milk. I feel like, like, like garbage. I'm a milk. Totally fine. Um, cookies, delicious. <laughs> cookies are fine too. Yeah. I had a, last night was the first, like, um, it was the first visit I got from the food boss battle in a while. Uh, yeah. Which was really fun to to yeah. have that that come back to play. And, what was uh, the food boss battle? What'd you do? Yeah, so I got home uh, from hanging out with my boss. Um, we had like we just launched the project we were working on for internal alpha, so we went out mm -hmm. to celebrate. Uh, got back and I'm like, fuck, I'm really hungry. Um, and I ordered like a little eight inch pizza and some wings uh uh -huh. smash those which is like a reasonable decision to make with my wife i felt totally fine 
and then it was like, oh, I really want some cookies. Like, I really, but do I like capital W want some cookies? Yeah. <laughs> no, really. I, like, I don't, but I'm going to order them anyway. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they showed up and do you know what crumble cookies are? Um, yeah, I think, are they not the ones that, and tell me if I don't know what those are and I'm totally off base, but are they the ones that like rise up a butt? No, never mind. I don't know. I can't describe them. Go ahead. So they're really big. They um, and they're like, their menu rotates every week, basically. It's, uh, and they deliver. They're fucking absurd. They're the best cookies I've ever had. Uh, but they don't let you order just one. You have to order a box of four. Um, I'm like, that's fine. And so they show up. And I'm like, eh, I had half of one. Um, and even that for me was like, oh, this doesn't feel very good anymore. Yeah, like I'm, yep. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Mm -hmm. And then I actually was good. Like I just put the other ones in the fridge and called it a day. Uh, and that whole like process of like, I'm really not hungry. These sound good. I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, I don't feel good anymore. Uh, that's usually, and I'm like, that would normally be the fork in the road moment of like, oh, I already don't feel good. Fuck it. We're going mm -hmm. all the way. You have four mm -hmm. cookies. We're going to eat all four cookies. Um, and this time was just, I already don't feel that great. I don't want to perpetuate that anymore. Uh, and called it good. And I uh, woke up this morning. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. What's up, old friend? It was good to see you again. Yeah. I mean, uh, like, I, I think you, you won there with like, you won when you were just like, I'm going to get what I want. Yeah. And you're like, no, these cookies like are bad. I can't have them, blah, 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 whatever it is. You just got them. Then you ate them. Then you like ate them and you're like, I'm not feeling so great. And then you stopped. Yep. And like you won literally the whole way through from the ordering of the pizza, crushing that all the way through to the cookies. Yeah, for sure, man. Cool. It, it felt really... Hey, thanks. Look at that. Uh, You're here the next day. And even if you didn't, right? Even if you did like lose the battle, which I, like that's not even yeah. accurate. Yeah. It's like, guess what? Literally the next meal is another opportunity. It's every time, like that's the beauty of food. It's like, we just keep getting the opportunity to be how we want to be around the food that we're eating. And it's like, oh, I binged. Okay, well, I guess I'm a failure forever and I must binge for eternity it's like no this is not how it works it's just giving myself the permission to just do what i want with my food and it's like so much of a relief so much of the like time is like just my body being like can you fucking feed me for fuck's sake can we not be on yeah. some fucking thing where i can't fucking eat like can i just fucking eat food for fuck's sake that's so much of where the binging is coming from is all this like restriction 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 and then eventually over time it just kind of levels out it's like, oh, like, oh, I, I get food regularly. I'm not, I'm not on like some crazy fucking thing where I have to like regiment everything and I fucking measure every fucking thing out to its like most minute detail. And now, oh, okay, I can like, I can relax. <laughs> I'm not yeah. freaking the fuck out. It's not a food emergency every day. No, it, it does. It's just a much more even keeled experience. Yeah, David. exactly. Yep. Yep. And yeah, it was, it was, it was fun. And then I took like a five pound dump this morning and I feel like a new man. Yeah, so, dude. Yeah. Those are pretty great. I love those worked out. nice big deuces. All right, dude, let's get into it, man. We got a resentment up. Yeah. I don't have it up. Let me do some typing and I will have it up momentarily. Uh, also like the brave browser thing like i open it and it's like you saved me how much time yeah. oh i love you so much uh, and it's funny going on like um ign where it's like hey we noticed you don't have ads we survive only with ads I'm like well sorry it's yeah i don't just, know what to tell you yeah you can turn it off though you can go and go into the like the little brave icon and you can flip it if you do want to go to a site that will like track you and stuff so. Yeah, I, I just, they, they'll survive without my ad income. They're yeah. fine. IGN is a trash website anyway. I don't know. Yeah, uh, so. I don't know. That's a good question. Okay, good one here. So this looks like, so again, we have like uh, people, principles, and institutions as resentments, right? And this look, which one of those is, is this resentment here? That's a 
principle, and I have, I actually think it's kind of part of the institution of the whole thing too. Uh, like, what institution is that? Uh, like the like, kind of manifest destiny America institution. Um, but it's it's more of the principle. All right. Well, let's read it out, man. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the resentment is do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Kind of that quote that people hear. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the story here is it feels like all I do is work. Do I not love what I'm doing? Does anybody actually love what they do? This notion is clearly bullshit designed for people who have their heads in the clouds. Uh -huh. Even if I love what I do, I still have to go to work for eight hours a day. I'm uh -huh. not sure you can get around the fact that work is in fact in that sentence. Uh huh. What if I don't love anything that I can get paid for? I guess I'll spend my whole life working then, no matter mm -hmm. what I try. I've never found something that truly inspires me every day to wake up and do my best work. Mm -hmm. I always eventually feel trapped. Mm -hmm. Seems like some of my friends have jobs they genuinely love and feel inspired by. It mm -hmm. also seems like all of them have either started their own businesses or have a side hustle that inspires them. What do I have? Neither one of those. And even if I did, neither one would ever be able to pay me as consistently well or as consistently and as as well as engineering does. There's just not enough to go around. Great fucking story dude this touches like this is an awesome story i love it this is really good this is yeah, really this really is good um, got like i can really feel this for sure uh absolutely great job so okay what are the facts i have a job and i go to work okay um, okay uh yeah, pocketbook, super obvious one here. It's like I like the italicized bolds. This is a, that's a new. We're adding some some text editing here. It's very fancy. Yeah, so I this think is it, the first one that has any of this in it. Yeah, it does. Um, and I think it it just more adequately conveys. Like I can read that and be like, oh, that's a thing. Like that is a moment of emphasis. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right. So how does this affect your pocketbook? Yeah, dude. It's like, I have this job that I get paid a shit ton of money for. Um, and that's great. But then there's this belief of like, oh, I can't, I don't have any other choices. Like this is my only way to have a stable pocketbook. Um, and then other than that, I'm going to like, what is this? Ahead. So what is this only way? Like, what is this only way? Yeah, like grind it out in the cubicle farm. So yeah, how do yeah, how does your resentment towards this phrase affect oh, your pocketbook? Yeah. Um yeah, I don't like I don't believe um or some part of me doesn't believe that it's possible to both do what you love and get paid for it bingo i cannot i can't i i have to fucking suck i have to suck it up and feel like shit for me to impact this yeah yep yeah exactly um, how does this affect your pride yeah i think i get into that with the like oh there's all these people around me who are super proud of what they do and they love what they do and i don't feel like i always love what i do maybe i'm like the problem or like why don't i feel special and excited about all this stuff well what it, what is pride uh yeah deriving satisfaction from some one your own accomplishments or something exactly like so how does your resentment here affect your pride yeah it's like i don't always feel that way um oh, don't always feel what way that like i love what i do so i'm not actually working uh and that's how i'm supposed to feel right and so i don't get to, i like don't get to phone home of like oh my gosh it hasn't doesn't feel like i've worked in like six months it's like no i feel like i work every day that's not what's supposed to happen right um yeah and so and the consequence of that is that you are what like, so if you're not living, if you're not like this influencer that is just like on Bali all the time, dancing around, making millions of dollars, you're what? Yeah, you're failing. Exactly. I, you know. yeah, I'm, uh-huh. All right. Self-esteem. Yep. Um, yeah. It's like, if I, 
if I could just love what I do, uh, I might find, like, I might feel good about myself, but I don't always feel that way. So I don't feel very good. And again, it's like, if I am comparing myself to that kind of like influencer, just prancing around, uh, living their, their quote unquote dream, uh, perpetually that comparison cycle is inevitably going to make sure I don't feel very good. I mean, comparison to others is always a surefire way to reduce my well-being and self-esteem. <laughs> surefire way. Uh, yeah, there, if I, I have an ambition of this statement being true for me, right? Like, do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, and I don't always feel that way. So that's getting fucked with. Yep. You want it to be true, but you don't really think that it is. Yep. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Selfishness. Yep. Uh, this saying is targeted towards people like me and designed to make sure I keep pursuing things outside of myself. Nothing is ever going to be good enough for me. Yeah, but what's selfish here? There's a really, 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 like, I won't say obvious one, but um, but there is one, like, a part of this that uh, is, like, boilerplate selfishness, and yeah, I'm not like, going to give it away. I am unique in some way that this will never apply to me. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, like, okay. Um, which in that giant story, uh, which one is like the closest, most obvious relative to selfishness? Uh, I mean, to me, it feels like the whole thing is. I don't yeah. really see it. A... Definitely every resentment is selfish because I'm like, woe is me. Little pity party for myself, blah, blah, blah. We're going to just assume that's a given for all of them. So it's like, that's just always in each one. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, let, me, yeah, let, me it, let me put it this way. Um, why aren't I happy when I see a bunch of other people that look like they're crushing it in life and having what they want? There's not enough for me to. Because I'm fucking focused on myself and how I don't have it. It's like, oh, this influencer is dancing and frolicking on the beach with all these models. Wah. <laughs> Fuck them. I want that. I don't have it. Boo hoo 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 hoo. I would not phrase it thusly. This is specifically about selfishness, which is the, and the selfishness we're talking about here is the disproportionate focus on one's self to a point where it doesn't feel good anymore. And so when I look at others, and I'm like, I'm mad because I don't have that. What is that? What is like? What is that called? Yeah, I, I, I guess I don't understand the distinction. Like, I don't understand what the wording we're looking for is. No, that's. It, I mean, it's called selfishness, right? <laughs> oh, I know that. That's why I'm like, okay, I know that. That's it. That's it. It was wasn't a trick question. <laughs> it's selfishness. So. This saying is targeted towards people like me and designed to make sure I keep pursuing things outside of myself. Yeah, I don't like. I don't think that's what this saying is doing. Uh, nothing's ever going to be good enough for me. That's not really a selfishness thing. Um, um, like other people have something I don't. 
yeah, like, yeah, it's basically, I'm, I'm mad because I don't have what, like, I'm coveting other people's shit. I'm mad because I don't have what other people have. Bingo. Exactly. I'm mad or sad or whatever the emotion is, right? It can be a combination, jealous, Yeah. right? Whatever discord and emotion it is. Jealous feels better. There you go. Exactly. Very, very simple. It's like, no matter how long we do these, the selfish one for me is always really fucking hard. Well, let's flip the script on that one entirely. Um, and it's like, I just want to practice more on becoming attuned with the selfishness, the selfish aspect of these particular resentments. Boom. That's it. It's just practice. And when you start w working with your guys, you'll come up with it too. You'll have to be like, okay, all right. And then it'll be easier with the guys. Because oh, it's... Be like, because it's like, it's their shit. It's not my shit. And also you make the rules. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is it's... it possibly this? Um, yeah. So it's, it's why really we do easier. it. This is why yeah. we do it together. Right. I'm sure if I were to go through my resentment inventory with my mentor and go through and get to selfishness, he'd be like, well, what about this? I'd be like, oh my God, yeah, okay. I missed that one. That's why we do this. That's it. Okay, dishonesty. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I have to go to work. Like that is a requirement. Uh, this is only for people with their heads in the clouds. I would actually want, yeah, I want to pause there and the, I have to go to work. It's like anyway, like, oh, so you just like don't go to work anymore. I was like, well, you don't have to do your job you're in. Like, that's a fucking lie. That's in a complete lie. Yeah. I don't have to. Now, where is there possible that there's other suffering involved from leaving my job? Maybe. Or maybe it's not as scary as I think it is. From personal experience, I left a job. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do any of this stuff. And I left my job at the bank and I enrolled and I fucking swallowed some humble pie and enrolled in college fucking algebra at a community college at Arapahoe Community College. College algebra at 27. Yeah, dude, I'm taking intro to stats at FRCC. Other people 26. were like, like at Morgan, Morgan Stanley in Manhattan, right? Uh, like other like peers in class. I'm at Arapahoe Community College. Seems crazy right now though, dude, 100% worth it. 100% worth it. Now your story might not be like mine. You might have kids, you might have all sorts of other reasons why you have bought into like, I can't have what I want. I have to do this shit job but you probably don't. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Continue. Yeah, I am broken in some way for not loving my work or for not being grateful for my position in life. Mm -hmm. There's not enough out there in the world for me. Yeah. I can either have a stable and safe job or a life that I love and not both. There it is. I think that's the crux. You just nailed the dishonesty right yeah. there. So your resentment towards this is without give, I don't want to give this away, but what's the real resentment towards this phrasing or towards this sentence towards this? Yeah. Uh, if uh, it's like a belief that that's not for me, I can't go. Exactly. This is not really like, this is for other people. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's great for other people. Like, but yeah, I live in the real world right? Or I'm not that lucky, whatever it is, right? I, this is unattainable. Bingo. That's the real resentment. Exactly. And you nailed it right there. Yep. Continue. The only people I know who are happy are entrepreneurs and that is the only way to really thrive in life. Uh, I don't have side projects or things that inspire me or that I enjoy. Uh, yeah. 
I agree though. I think we got to the crux of it before those. Yeah, these are like these are like examples. Yeah. Of like of the first one. Yep. Yep. Look at the evidence for why this bullshit story that I'm telling myself is true. Yep. yep. Exactly. That's basically what dishonesties are. They're like, look at all these examples for my bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Look at all of them. There's one, there's one, there's one. I'll point over there, point over there, which is like why the mindset is so important. Like why I start with fucking appreciations for, for everybody. Gratitude, 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 gratitude. It is almost impossible to feel shitty when I'm like actually grateful or appreciating the things in my life. And then I start yeah. to find evidence for the contrary, for the things that I actually want, for the feeling goodness. And then I can be like, oh, look at that example. Look at that example. Look at that example. Look at that over there. Look at that over there. Look at that over there. And create new grooves in the brain that don't default to, I can't have the things that I want. I'm fucked. I must be sad. Happiness is for other people. Doing things I like enjoy are for other people. They're for the people who put it on Instagram. Not for me. I won't go off on a tangent of like, I'm pretty sure 99% of influencers are absolutely miserable, but uh, yeah, I would love to I, take an actual like psychological evaluation of them because I think in order to like want to become an influencer and like get motivated from people lo looking at you and like, no, but like, Ooh, uh, I, I watched number go up me happy. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I have more hearts equals satisfaction equals okayness. Like that's fucking precarious as shit. Yeah. So I, that's that's all besides the point. That's all other I, people. That's all of their shit. There could yeah. be a billion, good for them. I'm glad they're in Bali on the beach. I hope they are actually really happy and content. Yeah. Same. Uh, same. That seems dope. Good for you. Dan Bilzerian. A big giant lie. The whole thing is just a big fucking sham. Yeah. Yeah. The dude could be lying down being blown by 12 supermodels and be absolutely dead inside. Anyway, fear. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, what is the fear here? Yep. So we've touched on the dishonesty, which is what... Let's go back to the dishonesty. What's the main dishonesty? I can either have a stable and safe job or a life that I love. I can't have both. This is not for me. This might be true for other people. Not for me. Por que no los dos? No dos. Pick one. So the fear is? Uh, yeah, I'll spend the rest of my life feeling unfulfilled, chasing this notion of doing what I love, constantly coming up short. I'll resent myself for this and I'll resent anyone who does seem to have this figured out. There's no way out for me and I'm always going to be trapped in the rat race. There's no job I could get, no amount of income I could make and nothing I could pursue that will genuinely bring me consistent happiness and success. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's actually true. And that's I also think, yeah. totally fine with it being a fear because that's scary as fuck because well, if, it can't, if it's not a job or money then where does it come from? These are all like things that make sense. I understand what a job is and like what lots of money is. That makes very clear sense to me. And those are very quantifiable. So if, if joy doesn't come from there, what fucking shady, weird shit does it come from? <laughs> That's scary. The unknown. A hundred percent. So spend the rest of my life feeling unfulfilled. What is that? Uh, is, I'm not enough. The bigger one, though, is I can't have what I want there. For sure. Oh, well. Uh, can't have what I want. I must suffer for the outcomes. Yeah, how, like, 
spend the rest of my life feeling unfulfilled. Yeah. So how long will you be suffering for? Forever. Exactly. Ever. That's what I'll, that's what I was going for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We should make a horror movie called the suffering. And it's just <laughs> a person just living their life. <laughs> <laughs> And then just dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things outside of me determine my worth, right? It's like that job or the thing, the money. Yeah, what's gonna make. Yeah. Uh, oh, so we uh, there's one more that I that I that is coming to mind, and it is related to other people having things, and yeah. me not having things. Um. Yeah, bingo. So it's like, exactly. Like, so there's the, I'm not enough. Yeah. Then there's, there is not enough. Those are two very distinct things. So go ahead and explain the difference between those two things for me. Yeah. I am not enough is like, I am a worthless piece of shit who can't have the things that like he wants out of life. Why can't you have the thing? Like given that you're not enough, why can't you have them? Because I, I don't have whatever qualities or uh, skills or whatever things would- You don't deserve them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're not worthy of having them. Because yeah. why would someone who's a big piece of steaming shit get all of these things? Yeah. And then what's the, there is not enough. Yeah, everyone else has already has a monopoly on the things in the world. Uh, and I, I can't have it as well. It's There's a finite pie of shit. Yep. And yeah. And everyone's got their slice. There is not a slice enough for me. Yep. Here's the beautiful me, thing yeah, is, like, is like baby. people will go towards money all the time for this stuff, even though money just the, you know, the money printer goes burr and it's like, we can make it as much as we want of it, blah, blah, blah. There's only a finite, and it's true. There's a finite amount of resources on the planet. A hundred percent there are. What is not a finite resource? That would, I would argue, make life not worth living at all. It's, so I'm sorry, not a finite resource. What is it? I'll put it in the affirmative. What is a, what is an infinite resource that makes life worth living? That's yeah, the I only think. fucking reason I'm on this planet. It's well being, I think. Like, yeah, it's love, man. Exactly. Exactly. And that is an unending well, wellspring that I can put into the world. It's like, oh, there's not enough love in the world. Guess what? Guess what I can do right now? Go ahead and put some more into it. That's on me entirely. I can do that right now. I can pick up the phone and call a friend I haven't talked to in a very long time, who I know is not doing so hot or who is doing great. Say, you know what, man? Someone else out there cares about you. There's not enoughness. You're like, you want the things like the money and the fucking, like the girl, like the fucking cash and the prizes and all that, like all those like finite things. Start with giving other shit away. Yeah, there, I, there is not enough total bullshit. There's plenty. Because what I'm really wanting is all those things. It's all those things that there is no, like, there's no well I'm going to finish tapping. Yeah. All those things that, like, I'm really just alive to experience in the first place. Like, there's no federal reserve on love, <laughs> right? It's not like, oh, what's the interest rate on loves right now? <laughs> oh man, it's infinity. That's what it is. <laughs> and I don't get more of it by hoarding it and keeping it locked away, away from everybody else. The more I give it, the more I get. And it's the same with all of those other things that I'm wanting. Well-being, feeling goodness, vigorousness, health, giving it away. 
Good work, man. Hey, thanks, dude. Good that work, was the first dude. one in a while uh, where I was like, no. No, no. what? It's like, no, it's selfish in the way that I think it is. No, this oh, is well, mine. I mean, you're not wrong, right? It's like, it, it oh, can't totally. be also be selfish in the other way. It was just, totally. there was a very, very clear one to me. Yeah, which I think is the better one. Whenever I'm like, other people have a blah, 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 and I don't have it, right? It's just like, a little trick I use is like, can I envision myself as like a little kid what, complaining about this? It's like, oh, other <laughs> people are uh, yeah, on Instagram and they look so hot eh, and I don't, eh, I want it. Like the petulant child voice, that's like, that's very easy to equate with the selfishness. Again, yes. The difficult part with selfishness is that, is that the whole fucking thing is selfish because it's a resentment and I'm just like stewing over this thing and how it affects my life and how I'm sad because I don't have it and like blah, 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 blah. I'm mad or jealous or whatever other emotion I'm feeling. And I'm just going to stew on it and think about it, have my own little pity party. All of that is selfish, obviously, right? But let's dig in. Let's get into the nuance, play around with it a little bit. And then go, the dishonesty is super easy. The fear is super easy, I think, because we're practiced at, like, but the selfishness is an important piece. Why is it important, Jordan? Uh, well, it's, it's all, they're all selfish. Uh, but why but is it, it important? It takes, I think it, it kind of takes the juice out of it. Um, at least so? for me, it does. Like, if I, if I do frame it as that like petulant child voice, it's like, oh, fucking stop being a little bitch. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, and I'm not special. Like more importantly, um, these problems are not necessarily unique to me and they are not uh, true for me unless I choose them to be. It, well, why is recognizing that it's like, this is selfish behavior? Important? Yeah. It, it, if I'm consumed by selfishness, I'm not likely to be able to give away things very freely or to experience life in the way that I want to. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to just, those, all those things are nice and they sound very, very nice, but I'm going to give it away. And <laughs> so I realize that it's selfish behavior. What do I now know? that I can do. Oh, yeah, not behave in that way. So whose control is the resentment in? That'd be me. Exactly. So now I recognize that I know that I have the power to change this way of thinking yeah. and this resentment. It's not like them out there, and if the, this world would just straighten itself out, then I'll be okay. Yeah. This is another reason I don't like politics. This is like, well, when will they make things better for me so I can just get my shit together? They're not, they don't give a fuck about you, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. I don't need them to take care of me. It's yeah. so much more empowering to take ownership and responsibility for my emotions than it is yeah. blaming the surrounding, whatever's been done to me regardless of what's been done to me. Not justifying, not saying it's okay if fucked up shit happened to you, but it's been done. There's nothing I can do about it. It's already happened. What I can do is change my response to what has happened. Now, do I wanna sit and feel like shit about it forever? Or do I wanna change my perspective and change my life? So it doesn't do it. Like, let's say it's horrible shit. Let's say I was abused as a kid. I can't change that. I can't do anything about it, but it was done. It's been done. Now, do I want to put, do I want to have anger and resentment and put that into the world? Or does the buck stop with me? And I can do both. And I'll fuck it up and I'll do both, right? <laughs> but that's what's important about recognizing the selfishness. That makes sense. Because, and, and ironically, I'm now making it about me again, 
right? <laughs> <laughs> but there is selfishness with a capital S and then there's capital, there's lower case S selfishness, right? Yeah. It's recognizing and focusing on the self to make it better and making the world a better place to be in. There's that, and I don't know if it's Rumi because I saw it on the internet. Um, yeah, and it just gets attributed to it, Rumi. Yeah, and, and I don't care, but it's <laughs> so apt. Um, and I'm just going to paraphrase it where it was like, when I was young, I cared a lot. So I wanted to change the world. When I got older, I became wise and I cared a lot. So I changed myself. Yeah. Changing myself is changing the world. So much of the changing of the world shit is like the other. And it's like these things outside of myself, I'm going to make better. Yeah. One is way harder. <laughs> I have so much limited control of what else happens in the world, right? And two, it's immediate. It's immediate and direct change. Like making myself better in this world makes the world better. Reducing the amount of hate and anger, resentment and jealousy and fear and lies with myself reduces it in the world immediately. Why would I not do that? Then maybe once I've done that, okay, go out and help the rest of the world who may or may not need my help. And then we're going to go and help in one-on-one -on -one like we do here, right? Yeah. And then <sighs> nice little pyramid scheme. <laughs> MLM the fuck out of these bitches. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, great work today. Great work on the resentment. Um, great session. And yeah, until next week, sir. Anything else for me before we sign off? Appreciate your time as always. It's All right. Honor and privilege. All right. Great work, man.